Hello, my amazing students. This is Mrs. A, and I love math. Today, we're working on lesson 53 in your Saxon Orange book. We're talking about the power rule for exponents. So here, first of all, we're going to start off by talking about all the things we've learned so far before we go into a new rule. So we've already talked about quite a few rules that have to do with exponents, and some of them are just definitions of what an exponent means. So x times x times x times x, and then we do this m times, however many m is, is x to the mth, and that's just the definition of what an exponent means, isn't it? And then we have the product rule. x to the m times x to the n is x to the m plus n. And that works whenever x is not equal to 0. And x to the 1 is x. And that's just a definition. x to the negative n is 1 over x to the n, which um, tells us what to do with that negative exponent. The negative exponent always has to move to become a positive exponent. If it's upstairs, it has to move downstairs. If it's downstairs, it has to move upstairs. And again, x cannot be equal to 0. So then we have some more rules that we have already covered. x to the 0 is equal to 1 when x does not equal 0. That's a definition. x to the m over x to the n, this is our quotient rule, is x to the m minus n. Now, when we did x to the m times x to the n, it was m plus n. And now when we're dividing them, it's m minus n. And they're consistent rules, aren't they? When we multiply, we add. When we divide, we subtract the exponents. Now, look at this one. Um, when we have x to the m minus n, and we flipped it down here, downstairs, wouldn't it make the exponent negative? And that's exactly what happens. If you take m minus n and multiply that expression by negative 1, you get negative m and a positive n. And so all they did was switch the n and the m around, and that made the m now negative and the n now positive, and it works with the other rules that we have. So x cannot be 0. So now we're ready to start with what this lesson is about today, which is our power rule. So x to the 5 cubed is x to the 5 times x to the 5 times x to the 5. Then using our product rule, we know that x to the 5 times x to the 5 times x to the 5, when we're multiplying like bases together, we add the exponents together. So 5 plus 5 plus 5 is x to the 15. So x to the 5 raised to the third power is x to the 15, which is the product of 5 and 3. So here is our rule stated. x to the m raised to the n. So the whole thing raised to the n is x to the m times n, where x does not equal 0. So I usually call this the power raised to another power rule, because I've got the m raised to another power, n. So um, they call it just the power rule. I call it power to a power rule, but that's all right. They're both, they're both fine, x to the m times n. So now let's do some work with those. Okay, so let's go on with some more practice. So a to the 5 raised to the 2, 5 times 2 is 10, so it's a to the 10. So this one, x to the negative 4 raised to the negative 2, negative 4 times negative 2 is 8, so it's x to the 8. x to the negative 2 raised to the 4 is x to the negative 8, because all I'm doing is multiplying them together. This is going to be p to the 49 and x to the 15 and m to the 2k. Pretty easy, huh? So let's do one that's a little trickier. Let's do one like this. So here is a more complicated problem where I have an expression raised to the third power. So we know if we were going to reason this out without our power rule, this would be 2x to the fifth y squared z times 2x to the fifth y squared z times 2x to the fifth y squared z. 
right? Because I am cubing that expression. I'm going to have it three times multiplied together. Well, I know when I do this that I'm going to have 2 times 2 times 2, and 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And then I'm going to have x to the fifth. And I could write these all out. I think your book does. I think your book just says 2 times 2 times 2. And x to the fifth times x to the fifth times x to the fifth. Don't worry. You won't have to do them all this way. And then a y squared times y squared times y squared. And then z times z times z. Z, z, z. I'm running out of room, so I'm just going to write them like that. Now, this would be an expansion of this problem, right? So then we know this is 8. And we know from our product rule that when we multiply three like bases together, we're going to add their exponents. So that's the x to the 15. And the same thing goes here. We're going to add those exponents and get y two four six and then z to the 1, and z to the 1, and z to the 1. So I add those all up, and I get z cubed. Okay, so there's the answer, but we certainly did it the long way, didn't we? We expanded this instead of using our power rule. So now let's just go through, now that we know what the answer is, let's go through and use our power rule, which simply means that these individual parts are going to be, so this is a product raised to a power, right? A product raised to the power is going to be each individual item gets raised to that power. So that's going to be 2 raised to the third power, and then times x to the fifth raised to the third power, and then x squared, y squared raised to the third power, and then z raised to the third power. Okay, so this is the power of a product rule that we're coming up on. And so 2 cubed is 8, and 8 to the fifth, I mean x to the fifth cubed, we multiply those together and get x to the 15. y squared cubed is y to the sixth, and z cubed is z cubed. So let's see that rule in action. Okay, I'm going to throw two rules in here that your book is using but not formally stating. So I'm going to introduce the power to a pro uh, the product to a power rule. Anytime I have a product raised to a power, your book is stating this rule but not necessarily showing the rule. They are telling you how to do the rule. So I'm going to just give you a rule for this, okay? A product raised to a power is the first part of the product raised to the power, the second part of the product raised to the power, the third part of the product raised to the power, and so on. So each factor gets raised to that power. And here we have a quotient to a power rule, another one that's implied in your book but not specifically stated, at least not in this lesson. So let's go ahead and state it. A over B raised to the whole thing is raised to the N is A to the N over B to the N. That's your quotient to a power rule. So let's show these rules here. So we've got 3x negative 2, y to the fifth, over z to the fourth, all raised to the negative 2. So they're using both of these rules in here. So basically that just means 3 to the negative 2, x to the negative 2 raised to the negative 2, y to the fifth raised to the negative 2, and then on the bottom, z to the fourth raised to a negative 2. Okay, so now um, when we're looking at this, we've got all these negative 2s, but let's first clean up our what we can. Okay, so we've got 3 to the negative 2. So let's just write, I'm going to just write this up here so I have a little bit of room. 3 to the negative 2, okay, and x to the negative 2 raised to the negative 2 is x to the 4. So that's positive. And then y to the 5 raised to the negative 2. So that's going to be y, y to the negative 10. And then on the bottom, we've got z to the 4 raised to the negative 2, which is going to be z to the negative 8. Okay, so now let's think about this here. 
we have some negative exponents and negative exponents have to go downstairs. So just because I'm out of room, I'm going to go ahead and move them downstairs right now. So 3 to the negative 2, we're going to erase it and we're going to slide it downstairs and make it 3 to the 2. Now, there's no reason I need to put a 1 up there right now because there's other stuff in the numerator. If I had nothing left in the numerator, I would certainly put a 1 there. Okay? Now, z to the negative 8 needs to come upstairs, but y to the negative 10 needs to go downstairs. So let's perform a switch. y to the negative 10 becomes y to the 10 and it goes away from up there. z to the negative 8 goes upstairs and becomes z to the 8, and so no longer is needed here. Okay, so now lastly, I'm going to change my 3 squared to 9, and let's check and see if we have the correct answer. x to the 4th, z to the 8th over 9y to the 10th. For some reason in your book, they left this downstairs as z to the negative 8, and they left this upstairs as y to the negative 10, but they've already covered with you in your book how that should be moved down. So usually, we do not consider it completely finished if we have negative exponents in the expression. So I'm going to stand by this, okay? Your book does it, leaving the negative exponents in and not flipping them, but they're going to quickly correct that because that's not really considered final form, is it? So I'm going to go ahead and do it this way and go ahead and clear your negative exponents out because we should be practicing that skill. Okay, so let's do another example. We have 2a to the negative 2b to the 2z to the negative 10 all raised to the negative 5. So that means it's going to be 2 to the negative 5 a to the negative 2 raised to the negative 5, b to the 2 raised to the, I'm not going to have enough room here at all, am I? So let's just do it down here. So we'll say 2 to the negative 5, a to the negative 2, to the negative 5, b to the 2, to the negative 5, z to the negative 10 to the negative 5. So let's clean this up a little bit. All right, now, I'm going to put a division sign right here. 2 to the negative 5, I have a negative exponent. So I'm going to make it go downstairs and be 1 over 2 to the 5. So it's a little cleaner, right? And 2 to the 5 is 32. 1 over 32, okay? So, a to the negative 2 raised to the negative 8, oops, negative 5, raised to the negative 5, negative 2 times negative 5 is 10, so that's going to be a to the 10, okay? And then b to the 2 raised to the negative 5 is b to the negative 10. Well, b to the negative 10 up there would be b to the positive 10 down here, and then z to the negative 10 raised to the negative 5 is z to the 50, so it's going upstairs. Now, your book should always let you know how they expect you to leave your exponents, okay? If I am going to leave all of my variables in the numerator, then this would be b to the negative 10 upstairs, wouldn't it? If I'm going to leave everything with positive exponents, then I have it correct the way I have it right now. But I really could take that one away because since I have other stuff up there, I don't need to really have a 1 up there. So a to the 10, z to the 50, 32 over 32b to the 10 would be my answer. Let's see what the book leaves. Okay, so the book is leaving it with a to the 10, b to the negative 10, z to the 50. So they're leaving everything in the numerator, which is fine. So the book's answer is right there. But in my answer, I took the b to the 10 downstairs. Um, so you'll see usually in higher math, we're going to leave positive exponents everywhere. 
but in your book they may be wanting you to put um, the all the ex var variables in the top which is fine but just watch for your instructions because even your book is going to change instructions from time to time and they may say um, leave positive exponents which is the way I left it or they may say leave all variables in the numerator which is the way your book left it we should be flexible enough to do it either way they tell us to do it all right so here is another example we have a quotient but inside the quotient we have a product don't we so we have a product and a quotient raised to a power so we're going to have four squared x squared y squared over m to the negative two quantity squared so four squared is 16 x squared y squared over m to the negative four okay so if we're going to leave, in either case, shouldn't we move that 4 upstairs, m to the 4 upstairs? Because I have a negative exponent, which is not desired, but I have a negative exponent in the denominator, which would not work either way we did it. So let's change it. Let's go ahead, 16x squared y squared m to the fourth going upstairs and now since we have nothing in the denominator this would be a perfectly good way to leave it your book left it this way this way is better isn't it okay because this way doesn't follow any of the rules it, does, it doesn't have variables in the numerator and it doesn't have positive exponents this is better okay so here we have a quotient and a product inside the quotient raised to a power so we're going to have 3 to the negative 2, x to the negative 2, y to the negative 2, raised to the negative 2, all over p to the 5, raised to the negative 2. Okay, so the negative 2 is going to be the exponent for each one of these parts of the product and the quotient. So now we're going to have what? 3 to the negative 2 is going to end up going downstairs so let's make our answer down here we'll do this one in a little bit all right so the three to the negative two is going to go downstairs and become a three squared the x to the negative two is going to go downstairs and become an x to the two this is a y to the four isn't it so it's going to stay upstairs and a p to the negative ten down here is going to move upstairs and become a p to the 10. Okay, so that would be the correct way to leave it. y to the 4th, p to the 10, and then we need to make this 3 squared, a 9 x squared. So this would be the correct way to leave it. Now, if your book said, or your test, or whatever you were taking said, leave all variables in the numerator, then we would move the x upstairs and that would be the correct way to write it okay and if we didn't want the fraction bar there we could say the correct way to write it was one ninth of all of that couldn't we so there's several different ways that we can write correctly a problem okay so generally in most problems you're going to see them say leave it with positive exponents in which case we would leave the 9 down there and we would leave the x squared down there okay so that would be the way I would leave the problem let's see how your book left the problem your book was not very thorough okay your book basically left the x squared because it became an x to the negative 2 they left it x to the negative 2 right there and the y to the 4 of course stayed up there the p to the negative 10 they left down there so basically what your book is doing is kind of an intermediate they're just basically showing you these two rules they're basically showing you these two rules, but not making you deal 
with the negative exponent. Okay, so they're going to make you deal with the negative exponent. They're just not making you leave it in that form right now. But what I want you to see is that these are all correct forms. This one would be preferred and considered more simplified than what they're leaving in your book. But what is in your book is still correct. So when you're grading your homework, if you have this one as an x to the negative 2 upstairs, that's okay. Just realize that eventually you're going to be given a, a rule and if you're not given a rule, you will leave it all positive exponents. That's kind of the default, is to leave everything with positive exponents at the end of a problem. So this would be the way you would default work it on a test. Um, if they tell you to leave all exponents in the numerator, I mean all variables in the numerator, you would move that one upstairs and make it a negative 2 on the exponent. But generally those are the two ways they leave it, either all positive exponents in which case this is right, or all variables on the top, in which case this is right. Okay, so what I'm saying is the way you're leaving it in, they're leaving it in the book is an intermediate step that they're doing just while they're teaching you this concept. That's not the way you would leave it on a test or on a homework. You would go ahead and finish it up and you would follow the rules that were stated either all exponents in the numerator, I mean all variables in the numerator, or all exponents positive. Those are the two rules that you're going to see um, most often.